The NASCAR Pinty Series has traveled across the country providing race fans with thrills and excitement. Now with only three races remaining, today's event at Circuit Icar in Mirabel, Quebec is one of the final opportunities for racers to stake their claim on the 2022 championship. This season, the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron has flexed his muscle. The Quebec racer leads the way to the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series Championship, but there's a host of others who want to break that supremacy Cameron has held since the beginning of the season. Now, there's three races to go in North America's toughest and most diverse championship right here on TSN. This is the NASCAR Pinty Series. We're at Circuit Icar for the General Tire 125. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Race number 11 in this 13 race season takes place at the old Mirabel Airport road course. Dave, 23 racers will take on the Icar short course. It's seven turns, 1.8 kilometers. It's basically three hairpin corners separated by a little bit of steering and acceleration. It really plays like a roval type of course. I mean, it's it's a lot of point and shoot, hard corners, a lot of passing opportunities, though. There is heavy braking. These drivers are going to have to be cautious not to use up their right front tire in these tight corners. There won't be any pit stops for the successful racer here today. Since our last event, Mark Antoine Cameron has had his 12-point penalty rescinded by NASCAR. That's shaking things up. NASCAR believed Mark was running an illegal muffler. After some closer inspection, it was deemed the muffler was actually legal. He now holds a 12-point lead over DJ Kennington with three points races to go. And another note, too, as we take a look at the point standings as they sit right now, Alex Tagliani has had his penalty rescinded for rough driving as well. He now sits third, 20 points back. And with more on how today's practice and qualifying went, let's set it down. Say hello to our own Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks, guys. Wet weather washed out on track activity this morning, so that means that today's starting grid is set by owner's points, putting the number 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron on the pole for today's event. Mark has led more laps than anyone this season, and that's kind of his strategy again today. Be out front, lead as many laps as he can, but also thinking of the championship. Two others to watch for today, newcomers this season. The 03 of Justin Arsenault, so many laps at this track, he had a number of test days. The 03 car should be fast. Same with the 07 of Alex LeBay, who raced in Daytona in the Xfinity Series last night, jetted up this morning, hopped in the car. He's very happy with it. Both should be fast. Both should be headed to the front. It'll be tough sledding for both of them, as well as Alex Gannett, who won in our most recent road race. They're starting at the back of the field. But let's send it down trackside. It's time to go oh, racing. Pilot, démarrez vos moteurs. Driver, start your engine. Sonia Choquette from Pinty's with today's command as the engines fire here on the front straightaway. Fantastic crowd assembled here at Circuit Icar. I'd say the biggest crowd we've ever had for an event here, Dave. It definitely adds to the atmosphere. And it's funny, we talk about weather washing out practice and altering qualifying. Look at the sky right now. Beautiful blue sky and lots of sunshine, and we'll have lots of onboard views to bring us today's race. We're going to be on board with LP Montour, driver of the number 13. He's had some impressive runs. Also with defending series champion LP Dumoulin in the 47. He's looking for a good run. He needs a bounce back run after some tough luck on the dirt at Oshweekin. But let's take a look at your E3 spark plug starting lineup. Cameron and Kennington will lead him to turn one. Alex Tagliani on the inside of row two with Trayton Lapsevich. Back to row three, it's Kevin Lacroix in the 74 and Andrew Ranger in the 27. And we look back to row number four. That's where we find LP Dumoulin. Brandon Watson, the rookie, starting alongside in the nine. Row five has Gary Clute in the 59. Could be a dark horse here today. And the eight of Ray Jr. Cordemanche. To the sixth row, it's Mark Dilly in the 64. J.P. Bergeron in the number one. And in row seven, Dexter Stacy and Wallace Stacy, son and father, side by side. Row number eight has Glenn Styers in the zero. Larry Jackson in the O'Neill Electric, number 84. And then row number nine, Sam Fellows in the 98. LP Montour in the 13. 
Rounding out the top 20 is Alex Gannett in the 39, Matthew Kingsbury in the 12, and then back to row 11, we've got Serge Bordeaux making his second start in the series, Alex LeBay in the 07, and rounding it off, Justin Arsenault making his debut in the 03. Arsenault, the 15th driver to make a debut here in 2022. As you see the field trying to get some heat into those general tires, getting a feel for these race cars with limited track time here today. Fortunately, Justin Arsenault has a lot of laps on this racetrack, but let's have a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. It's 70 laps. We talked about the track being just seven turns. Kevin Lacroix is our most recent winner. In fact, Dave, Andrew Ranger and Kevin Lacroix have won every race here with the exception of the very first, and that was Robin Buck. And all those races have been won by drivers who pilot a Dodge. We'll see if another manufacturer can break through to victory lane here today. Again, it'll be 70 laps. There is the man formerly known as the king of iCar, Andrew Ranger, four victories here at Circuit iCar as they make their way onto the front straightaway. Julie Bouchard from Pinty's with the green flag and we're underway. Down into turn number one, Tagliani almost looked like he wanted to go to the inside of Cameron. Cameron will lead the way into turn two. A land rush start. Everybody files in behind the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Keep in mind, this race was lined up by the rule book, basically by point standings. So there will be cars starting a little bit deeper who are faster than those ahead of them. So we're going to see some big moves early on in this one. So the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington slide back a couple of positions. The Napa Auto Parts number 74 Cadillac was on a tear in the early going. Contact with the Viagra Chevy of Alex Tagliani. A little bit of rubbing, Dave, as we complete lap number one. Kevin Lacroix still looking to the inside down into the first turn. One of the great passing opportunities here, turn one. But then you're on the outside for turn number two. That gives the advantage back to the 18. It gets a little bit narrow off the exit. The track is 70 feet wide, but they only want those 10 feet at the very outside. Lacroix able to stick it. There's that hairpin turn that we talked about off the top of the show. Turn number three, another one of those great passing opportunities as Lacroix finishes the pass and he brings along Ranger with him. After turn three, you've got that kink to the right, which leads you into another hairpin turn. And then the same thing, it's just a bit of an S's back to the start finish line, but Kevin Lacroix wasted no time. He's up to the second spot. Pace is pretty frenetic here at the short circuit at Circuit Icar. You can see just how quickly the laps will tick off. And again, just 70 laps to be completed here today. And it's about a half a mile, the overall length of the circuit, 1.8 kilometers. Prior to the appeal made by Cameron and his race team, he was tied in points with DJ Kennington. Now he's 12 points ahead, so Kennington has to make sure he keeps the leaders in his sights. Quick look back from the GM Pie number 27 of Andrew Ranger, man from Roxton Pond, Quebec, currently sitting in third spot ahead of Alex Tagliani and DJ Kennington. Don't count out the driver in the Castro Edge Dodge. Remember, Kennington finished on the podium at the Grand Prix of 20 year last time we were on a street circuit or a road course. There's not a track we go to DJ Kennington can't win on. He's done it before. He's won on all sorts of different racetracks. But this one in particular is always such a sprint race. See, there's not the charge just yet. Drivers are still saving their equipment on board the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Jubilee. He's the driver currently chasing Kennington. And it looks like Alex Tagli, and he's starting to get hungry for that third spot. Dublin has a similar style to DJ Kennington. He doesn't have to get out front right away. The top three, they like to be out front. Cameron, Kevin Lacroix, Andrew Ranger, even Alex Tagliani. So the top four, if they can get there, they want to be there, set the pace and force everybody else to have to try to keep up. And it looks like Lacroix is starting to close the gap on your race leader, the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. 
had been all by himself out in front since the initial drop of the green, but that distance between first and second is starting to shrink. Keep an eye on that blue and yellow number, 74. You'll see a difference in the driving styles of our two leaders as well. Cameron, he's hairy, he's wild out there. It's a controlled aggression. Kevin LaCroix, you'll see he points his race car. It's, it's just a minor difference in styles, but it's fun to watch the two of them race together because they're both so fast and they have such a different way of going about things. Still under green here at Circuit Icar, Mark Antoine Cameron continues to lead. The 11th race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty season on TSN is brought to you by Pinty, making great food fun. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By Fast Eddie Speedwear, get geared up. And by Vilmer, tires and mechanical. Kevin Lacroix is there. He has arrived at the race leader, Mark Antoine Cameron. Takes a look to the inside in turn number two. Now it's a short straightaway before the hairpin third turn. To the inside, the Dodge taking a look on the Chevy, and it's early in this race. So Mark Antoine Cameron smartly backs off. He'll chase the Napa Auto Parts number 74 for a little while. This is an opportunity for Cameron to see exactly where Kevin Lacroix is faster than he is. We can see on corner entry, Cameron equally as fast as the 74, loses a little bit on the exit. You see a quick wiggle out of the 96 as well of Cameron as we ride on board now. Watch his hands on the exit of turn one. It looked pretty smooth there, but he's pushing to try and keep touch with that 74. There you can see back to third spot now in the hands of the 18 of Alex Tank, Leany, Andrew Ranger, DJ Kennington round out the top five, but LB Dumoulin in the 47 has now closed the gap. He's on the back bumper of the 17, uh, 17 and Dumoulin has really had his struggles at time this year. Remember that big wreck that he had at Grand Prix to 20 Pierre? Really struggled at Osh weekend. Yeah, he's had his hands full this year. A lot of distractions, a lot of hardship at the racetrack, but nothing cures your woes in racing like standing on the podium at the end of a long day. It's funny, as they work their way through turn number one, headed for turn number two, that is actually part of an oval track here at Sir Cree Icar. This place is part of the NASCAR home track system. They run a weekly oval track race very flat, but very exciting. In the Montreal vicinity, this is really the only regular run racetrack left. St. Eustache, which was just up the road, obviously shuttered their doors not too long ago. So Circuit Icar is carrying the flag for NASCAR. Taking a look at the running order, we're keeping an eye on the 07 of Alex LeBay. He's now up just outside the top 10. This is a battle for eighth spot between the 20 of Drayton Lapsovich and Alex Gannett, the Moto Limite number 39. A little bit of contact there as Gannett is eager to get back up towards the front. Alex Gannett racing with confidence after that win at GP3R. Had to start at the back because qualifying was rained out. They're going to have to use a lot of race car to work through the field. Drayton Lapsovich is no slouch. The closer you get to the front of the field, the harder every driver becomes to pass. Gannett, one of those drivers who's been able to take care of his equipment in the races he's run. Left side, left side. There he goes to the inside. The Dave Jacobs Racing Prepared, number 39, moves to eighth spot. We saw on the streets of Toronto and on the streets of the Grand Prix de 20 Vier. That 39, very, very clean at the end of the day. Let's remember about the 20. Trayton Lapsovich raced here last year, but that car broke. He's a very good road course racer. A lot of experience with, with eye racing, race simulation, and of course, when you're Jeff Lapsovich's kid, you learn a thing or two about road racing. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a pretty good shoe behind the wheel of one of these cars, if history has shown. We look back through the field a little bit. There's Alex LeBay in the Prolong 07. He's working his way up through things. Has Dexter Stacy just out his windshield. So LeBay is closing in on the top 10. How would you like to be Alex LeBay right now? Finished in the top 10 at Daytona. 
just a few hours ago, hopped a plane, two hours sleep. They had a rain delay, so that pushed his departure time back. Managed to get here, found out qualifying was washed out. Now you got to roll up your sleeves and come from the back, friend. He's done it before. I remember his debut. I believe it was the year that Robin Buck won, the first year we were here. He started at the very back, raced his way up well into the top ten. He turned a lot of heads that day. Quick run on board the Bullies truck stop number 92 of Dexter Stacy. Remember, he finished on the podium at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park earlier on in this season. Of course, the next stop for the NASCAR Pinty Series will be back at the Old Mosport Road Course. Man, it's fun to ride along with these drivers. Alex LeBay wrestling with this race car, trying to close in. He'll look to the inside of Dexter Stacy. I think Stacy realized that might have been a lost cause, but as I say that, Stacy battles him on corner exit, but he's not going to do it. Alex LeBay gets the spot. Alex LeBay into the top 10. The thing about Dexter Stacy from Kanawaki, Quebec, is he does not give up easily. Every position is like it's the top step of the podium. He works hard out there. He is always giving it as we ride on board with the driver of the 92. There you can see the new tech wood number 59 of Gary Clude, the field working through some lap traffic. Contact between Treaton Lapsovich and the 66 of Wallace Stacy. It's hard to get out of the way and stay out of the way on a road course because you get out of the way in a left hand turn, you're right in the path for the next right hand turn. Looking back at that dice for fifth position between DJ Kennington and the green Castrol Edge, number 73, and on board now with the driver in sixth. And from 20 Air, Quebec, LP Dumoulin, who thought about taking a look. It's a Dodge versus Dodge battle into turn number three. Well, Dumoulin sees what we see, Dave. They're losing track of the cars ahead of them. You don't want to give away too much. You want to run your own pace but you don't want to lose track completely of those leaders. And the pace has been hectic so far. The leader now, the 74, Kevin Lacroix. Welcome back to Circuit I-Car, the old Mirabelle Airport just outside of Montreal. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is trackside as we take a look and Justin Arsenault in the 03 getting a little physical there with the 92 of Dexter Stacy. He's only been in NASCAR for 15 minutes, but he already knows eight tires handle better than four. Well, he's been doing a lot of karting growing up. He's raced some in Europe and uh, now just getting his feet wet here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. But once you learn racecraft, you know how to get to the front. And once you learn you've got fenders around you like you do in one of these cars, <laughs> oh, you're Iron problems. Man. Oh, no, Gary Clute in oh. the 59 has come up lame, and that is not a good part of the racetrack. That's about as far away from pit entrance as you can get for the new Techwood number 59 of Gary Clute. He has had an awful second half of the season. Let's head down, Todd. Yeah, guys, John Fletcher on the radio to his driver. Gary Clute had a problem in this afternoon warm-up session. The car just quit on him. That may have happened again. He is rolling again, but he has lost track position. Yeah, it looked like he was back not quite up to speed, but getting up to speed in that 59 as we ride on board with LP Montour in the Cam Loop 13. This is one of the Dumoulin cars. Yeah, he's in 14th, and crew chief Bill Burns reporting some transmission issues for the driver of the 13. So we'll keep an eye on the Kamloop sponsored Chevy. Kevin Lacroix just making it sing though at the front of the field. His lead now 1.2 seconds over Mark Antoine Cameron. Starting to drive away just a little bit. But in the pits, Todd Lewis is tracking down what may have gone on with the 59 of Gary Clute. He's with his crew chief. Let's see if we can find out. John Fletcher is the crew chief for Gary Clute. What did the driver tell you on the radio about what happened? Uh, we lost two gears in the tranny. So we got two left. Fingers crossed that those last two will hold on for the duration. 
And hopefully they're the right ones that you need as well because driving around in first gear is not going to help you. It's really not a glass half full kind of situation. <laughs> you need all four gears as we, we hear here. You can listen and see how many times they shift gears over the course of a lap and Gary Clute this is not a fun experience for a race car driver. Remember, he came so close to winning at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park at the beginning of the season. The one of J.P. Bergeron on pit lane in the Prolon Controls Mustang. Looks like they have some issues as well. We're hearing it's an electrical problem on the one machine. It's about the worst kind of problem you can have to track down on race day, Dave. And for a guy who didn't have much experience on the road courses and street circuits. He's done well on these types of tracks this year. He's in a tight battle with Brandon Watson for the Justin's Rookie of the Year crown. J.P. Bergeron has done a really nice job as a rookie. This is the most competitive season there has ever been in the NASCAR Pinty Series. So for him to come in this year, he fits right in with the clan. How about another driver fitting in? The 0-3 of Justin Archnow continues to move up from his 23rd place starting spot. Sitting in 12th right now as he chases the AER Curb Records, number 98 of Sam Fellows. And this is LaBay and Gannett nose to tail now. So Gannett had gotten off to a better start than Alex LeBay. LeBay caught him and passed him, runs in the seventh spot. But since he got around, Alex Gannett is not letting LeBay get away from him. And at this point, you have to decide, do we want to keep on charging or do we settle down just a little bit, hope for a yellow flag and save some of our stuff? Well, there's already almost 25 laps completed out of a scheduled 70 here. So you might start to think, with this field starting to spread out as much as it is, we might not get a caution. We might go green to checkered. So you really have to take those positions as they come. Yeah, I don't see how you can let up, but uh, it is. You use a lot more race car passing cars working through the field than you do even as Kevin Lacroix pacing the way out in front. Oh, no trouble. This could possibly call a caution. It's the 98 of Fellows. Sam Fellows is right at pit exit. There is no way to get back to the pits unless you're able to turn the wrong way and go counter race. We are under a yellow flag. That car is not going anywhere. There it is. The poly sleep number 98 of Sam Fellows comes to a rest. No contact reported. Just looks like that car rolled to a stop in turn number one. As Kevin Lacroix will see that huge lead that he built up, it was nearly four and a half seconds. It evaporates under this caution period. You can see Sam Fellows drops the window net in that 98. That's the sign that he doesn't need any medical assistance, so he's A-OK -okay there. His race car is a different story. No doubt a frustrated driver. As Kevin Lacroix continues to lead, we'll take a break under caution. We'll be back for more Green Flag here on TSN. Welcome back to race number 11 of the 13 race 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series season here on TSN. We're in the midst of the General Tire 125 field lining up side by side getting set for this restart. Lights are out on the pace car. That means Mike Henning, NASCAR official who leads a lot of laps in this series. He drives the pace vehicle. See what I did there, Dave? He pulls off the racetrack. <laughs> We're going to go back to green flag racing. Now is your opportunity to gain some spots for some of those drivers. They know how their car feel and they know what they can do and contact right off the drop of the green as we had to turn one and we're three wide. Cameron tried to close the door on Alex Tagliani make a move on the leader it did not work. He had to back out of it look at the track position it cost him in the GM Valley number 96 not only track position positions on the racetrack too. Wow. They fan out three wide, four wide. Ranger to the inside of Tagliani. They're too wide, too deep, allowing Kevin Lacroix to get away. Quick ride on board, Alex LeBay. There he is, single file now, all the way back to that dice for sixth spot between DJ Kennington and Alex Gannett. Gannett will take it as they head back onto the front straightaway. Did you recognize the move Mark Antoine Cameron had made on that restart? It was exactly what Kevin Lacroix did to take the lead in Toronto. When they dropped the green flag, he went from the outside to the inside. 
took the lead of the race and never looked back. For Cameron, he mistimed it just by a fraction of a second. Good on him for backing out and not wrecking your race leader, but it really did cost him. He's trying to work his way back up through the field. You can see a little damage. Uh, there, there. That's the news you want to hear. You're clear, clear. Yeah, a little bit of bodywork damage on a couple of cars after this restart. Lacroix is out in front. Andrew Ranger second. His teammate Cameron runs in the third spot, but they've got a little bit of ground to make up. Quick run on board with Mark Antoine Cameron chasing his fellow GM Pie sponsored entry the 27 of Andrew Ranger again Ranger with four wins here Kevin Lacroix who leads right now with three wins and a third place finish so Lacroix has been very very good at this racetrack here goes Cameron to the inside in turn number three of Ranger he's going to take over the second spot Five. Alex Tagliani could only watch as that Position changes hands. He'll slot in behind the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Ranger taking a look, though. Can he come back? Not quite there. Not close enough yet. No. Through the S's they go. Second all the way back to about eight spots. All within a few car lengths. It's only Kevin Lacroix who has broken away. Now, almost two seconds at the front of the field. Look at how dominant that 74 is on this short run after that restart. He had nobody to race with. Like, I mean, he's, he is dominant, and he's yeah. very good, but while they're swapping positions, all he's doing is hitting his marks just the way he has the whole race. Now that duo of LaBay and Gannett have linked up once again. Gannett gets into the back bumper of the Prolon Controls 07, a car prepared under the Dumoulin Competition shop, and LaBay currently trails the head of that shop in LP Dumoulin. Look at LaBay, though. He gave way. He opened that door and let the 39 through. Alex Gannett was on a mission, and he indeed got there. He'll try to track down the top five, but Todd Lewis is with a disappointed driver. That guy, Sam Fellows, has made his way back to the pit here. I guess this was the problem, Sam. Yeah, thanks. I kind of need that, Todd. Um, no, first of all, thanks to my sponsors, Curb Records, AR Manufacturing, uh, Love Good Fats, Poly Sleep. Yeah, we were having a decent day. We were having fun. I mean, started on owner's points, so a little further back, but... Uh, Fun track, lots of passing opportunities, so uh, we'll get him next week, CTMP. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Todd. You know, a lot of drivers say that, Dave, we'll get him next time. Yeah. Sam Fellows means it. His home track next week, CTMP, he knows he can make a dent there. So if he had to choose a place to have a problem, figure it out here, get things all pointed in the right direction, and head to CTMP next week. His dad, Ron Fellows, part of the ownership group at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Sam Fellows knows that track like the back of his hand, realistically. He can drive that track in his sleep, so he's super jazzed to get back there in a NASCAR Pinty Series car. Alex LeBay let Gannett go. He's still hanging on to that pack as Gannett is closed in on the back end of LP Dumlin. If there's one thing both of those drivers know, they're not going to ruin anyone's season to try to make a pass. So, so they're going to be up there and race with respect. But I think that's probably some of the reason why we haven't seen them be more aggressive. One wild card we're about to see, though, is Justin Arsenault. He has passed a lot of these cars as well. There's a good look at your Justin's Rookie of the Year contender, the GMS RGC Group, number nine of Brandon Watson. As he puts pressure down, the pastoral edge dodge of DJ Kennington. And some of these shots, you can see the beauty of Sir Free Icar, just how flat it is and just how much these cars slide around. This is really a driver's track. You have to physically manhandle your way around this circuit. Even though the course is very wide, relatively flat it's still very technical like you say it's a driver's course there's things you can do to make up a little bit of speed and we've seen some phenomenal races here Woo. right down in the gears for the 07 of Alex LeBay making his first start in the NASCAR PT Series since 2019. His first start for a team not owned by Dave Jacobs since 2014, believe it or not. Oh, and Gary Clute headed to the pits. J.P. Bergeron pit side. That smoke is not a good sign for the driver of the 59. Both those drivers have had off and on issues all race long as Bergeron finds his pit stall. You can see Clute going by. 
And again, not too much hurry out of the Dave Jacobs racing crew. They'll get to work and try and salvage as many points as they can here today. It almost looked like he caught the crew by surprise coming down pit road. They weren't quite ready for it, but they'll get things looked after there. Like we said, electrical problems are so very hard. And I know we've talked about him a bit. How about Justin Arsenal? He's right there behind Alex LeBay. These are some of the best racers in the country, and he has carved his way through them. Trayton Lapsovich right there as well in the number 20, the reigning rookie of the year here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. We'll be back with more from Circuit Icon. Circuit Icon opened back in 2008, hosted the first race for the NASCAR Pinty Series in 2011, but the series has been racing on this short course since 2017, and it's really elevated the action. I love what they've done shortening it up. I remember the big track, Dave. It was difficult to announce because when they go off in the distance, everything is flat. You have no perspective. It's hard to tell where they are. This way it keeps the field nicely bunched together. It's almost like racing on a road course, but a, a short track road course. So it's a lot of fun. And again, flat off camber in some spots. There's some bumps. You can see the cars popping all over them as they work their way around this facility the final hairpin turn before they get to the S's back to the start finish line it'll be 45 laps complete next time by 35 laps to go 25 laps to go and we should mention too that surface here at Sir Cree Icar is predominantly concrete as well which poses a different challenge for these drivers it's a very abrasive track service and you can see the amount of rubber it's taking on from these race cars as Mark Dilley in the 64 a little bit off the pace he gets well out of the way of these lead lap cars but the IHL Leland number 64 is not up to speed you can see last lap times across the top of your screen with the Pinty's ticker and Kevin Lacroix about two tenths of a second quicker last time by than the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Dexter Stacy giving a how do you do to Matthew Kingsbury in that Duro King number 12. He'll follow him through the turn as Mark Dilly turns towards pit road. Kingsbury in the 12 actually ran very well in the shortened practice session the hot lapping oh he locks up the left front though going into turn number one stacy almost followed him right in there but kingsbury was eighth quickest in that practice session earlier on today he just fell victim to looking at his rear view mirror dexter stacy was right behind him and that's what will happen you glance up you miss your mark by just a split second you lock up the wheels he's kicking himself though he tries to come back in turn number three got to the inside not quite close enough he'll have to fall in behind the bullies truck stop number 92. it just looks like fun though doesn't it dave it really does actually you're just you're completely muscling this car it's sliding it's it's almost like ice racing at times Let's go down trackside to Todd Lewis. He's with Gary Clute. Gary, I know you were having transmission problems earlier, and it looks like that's what's ended your day. Yeah, we uh, pretty early on we got stuck with third gear and thought we could kind of limp it home and maybe catch a couple points, but uh, finally quit on us. But uh, got to thank New Tech Wood for getting us out here, and uh, I don't know, it's never a bad day getting in a race car, so it's all good. Thanks, Gary. Guy's always got a smile on his face. Call him the smiling assassin because he will smile and then take away your positions as Justin Arsenault does just that to the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich as Lapsovich caught a lump a little bit in lap traffic. Arsenault is using all the classic stock car tricks. Lean on the car beside you, use a lap car as a pick. He has done his homework and this young driver who just turned 17, he knows the tricks of the trade been racing a little bit this year in the Nissan Sentra Cup. As a matter of fact, went to victory lane at the Grand Prix de 20 Gear, sends it in turn number one, slides it to the outside. Lachovic thought he could get back down low, but he couldn't as Arsenal hangs on. You know, I know with Matthew Kingsbury, I said it's because he looked in the mirror. With Arsenal, it might have been because he wasn't sure if Trayton would have been mad at him for the move that he pulled. <laughs> So that, that, that's running through my mind. Don't get anywhere near the front bumper of that 20. Speculation, Dave. 
Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, all covered by a blanket at this point as we ride on board yet again with the Prolon Control 07 of Alex LeBay. Man, he pounds those gears. And he doesn't seem worried at all. Now, he's normally driving an Xfinity Series car, so a little bit more robust in the transmission and a little bit different feeling between that car and this one. So he might just be used to a different feel. Drive it like you stole it, Alex. One driver who's actually having problems with his transmission, the 17 of DJ Kennington. High hopes coming into today. He's fallen back outside of the top 10. He's just hanging on right now. Yeah, remember he came into this race 12 points back of your leader, Mark Antoine Cameron. So he's trying to salvage as many points as he can here today, mitigating the damage. What a great battle we're watching. Alex Tagliani holding off LP Dumoulin. And I think LeBay and Gannett are just sort of waiting for their opportunity to come about. I can't see them forcing the issue, but we're 20 laps from the end of this. We're getting down to the final. Problems on the zero of Glenn Styers, the GSR sponsored Chevrolet off the pace. He's off the track right now, trying to roll his way back to pit lane. He'll get the advantage of a little downhill section there, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough to get him back to picket lane. If, if he could go any faster, he would. There is no power coming out of the zero machine, and there's no way he's going to make it back up this little incline to get to pit road. I don't see a way how we avoid a yellow. The field's working is with smart move from Glenn Styers, obviously a veteran in the racing circles, but a rookie here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. He's trying to get off. He's almost oh. right up against the wall. Sadly, he's getting used to this. Yeah, That's true. He's had a really rough go here in 2022. Caution does fly, though, for the stall zero. Out on track, just a stone's throw away from pit entrance in. And this will be the second caution of the day here in the General Tire 125. This changes things a little bit, doesn't it, Dave? It's going to be an exciting sprint to the finish when we come back here on TSN. It's the largest field since 2016 for the NASCAR Pinty Series here at Circuit iCar. And it's been pretty much all Kevin Lacroix so far, but this late race restart may shake things up. It changes everything, Dave. It's one last swing at the bat, and these these drivers know you got to swing for the fences. 16 to go, and there could be contact going into turn number one as we get back underway. Wow! Andrew Ranger from third place up into the lead at the exit of turn number one. LP Dumoulin side by side with Lacroix. Shot out of a cannon was the driver of the 27 Ranger. As the Roxton Pond Quebec native was waiting for that opportunity, but now can he hold off the Napa Auto Parts number 74 of Lacroix? Doesn't look like it. Lacroix is getting hungry. If anybody can, it's Andrew Ranger, but Kevin Lacroix has been so fast. For the second restart in a row, Cameron tried to pinch down. It didn't work, and Lacroix, he's taking it back right away. No contact, but a fairly aggressive move there for the race lead as he pushes a 27 to the outside now. Ranger in a battle there with L.P. Dumoulin and the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Dumoulin gave Cameron just enough room. Not an inch more. Cameron, it was enough for that driver to take the spot and he'll lead the way down towards turn number three. Try to get back around his teammate Andrew Ranger. Ranger knows it's coming, gets to the inside, has to get hard on the brakes, tries to dive it off the corner, but that opens the door for Cameron and move the 96 up to second spot. There you see him go. Swings around that outside. Ranger had the opportunity to drive it down into the next turn and make an issue of it, but I think he realized, settle down into third and try to protect that position. One of the big winners on that restart, the 39 Moto Limite Ford of Alex Gannett, now in fifth spot as he pressures defending series champion LP Jubilee in the 47, just behind that driver. And Andrew Ranger, you can see all four of those cars have been so close together for a lot of this race. 
Once again, Kevin Lacroix gets out in front. Once he got around Ranger, nobody else to battle. A little bit of bumper tag going, oh, we've got one around. Ah, oh, it's Justin Arsenault in the 0-3. Justin Arsenault goes around, and it doesn't look like much damage to the car, but it is stalled. You can see him trying to refire. A little bit of exhaust coming back up through the carburetor. Now he gets it going, but look at the track position he's lost. Yeah, he, he has lost the field, and there is no way to catch up without the help of a yellow flag. I wouldn't rule it out, Dave. No, not at this point. How aggressive these drivers have been here in the final few laps of this one. 12 to go. Last time passes. Oh! oh contact into the wall goes the 07 of Alex LeBay. A little help from the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Yeah, Tagliani was on the preferred inside turn number two. Let's have a look at this. Ouch. Looks like Tagliani just slid a little bit. And unfortunately for LeBay, he was out there. What was that, Casper the camera ghost? He drove right through it. <laughs> How do you do that? It's magic. Getting down to the final few laps here in the General Tire 125. back to this battle for third spot. Andrew Ranger continues to hold off LB Jumley. Now Alex Gannett moves up into fourth in the 39 as we continue under green here at Circuit Icar. Oh, uh, anything Alex Gannett can do, LeVay can do as well. He looks to the inside down into turn one. He'll try to knock LP Dumoulin out of the top five. LeVay has raced here at Circuit Icar six previous times. He's had three top five finishes. As we ride on board the driver in the Prolon Controls Dodge. Slams that gear, a little bit of contact, and LeBay squirts out front. You almost have to expect contact when there's a driver underneath you and they're making a pass. But now, look at Ranger has to go on the defensive and he won't be able to hold off the driver from Carbon and off the track goes the 27. They were all off the track. Wallace was for a bit, Gannett was for a bit, Andrew Ranger was for a bit. Look at the run, it costs the 27. LeBay to the inside, they make a little bit of contact, and Ranger has to take the high lane. That's gonna cost him another position. Man, LeBay really able to carve through turn number one. Now LP Dumoulin gonna look to the outside of Andrew Ranger. You drive off a of turn number two to the right, but it could set him up for a good exit in turn three. Shows you just how much of a momentum track this is as Ranger comes back to the inside of the 07 Little Bay. Now LeBay will have the preferred corner going back the other way. There is your race leader. LeBay took such a huge wide arc through that turn, but it got him off the corner very well. The white flag is out for Kevin Lacroix. One more lap to go. We're still tr trying to sort out the rest of the top five and into the top ten as Lacroix continues to lead Mark Antoine Cameron. But what a dice here for the second half. There you can see the gap between the two leaders and second place back to third place as well. The third and fourth is a little bit being battled for. Deeper in the top ten, they're still swapping paint. But out in front, Kevin Lacroix has had control of this race. You could see the calm in his eyes. Listen to the throttle as he eases it home. He has been so dominant here today. He's been so dominant here in his career, leading 48% of all laps here at Circuit Icar. Off the final turn, we crown a new king of Circuit Icar. Kevin Lacroix wins the General Tire 125. Mark Antoine Cameron second, Alex Gannett holds off Alex LeBay to take the final step on the podium. He's not even gonna wait for his donuts in turn one as everybody else takes the checkered flag. Big celebration from the driver of the Nap Auto Parts number 74. He's 10 minutes down the road from home. He got it done. Let's look at our top 10. We showed you the top five. How about Brandon Watson, solid ninth, and Dexter Stacy, a hard working 10th place finish. And they just did their jobs all day. LP Montour, remember he had his struggles, came home third, or 11th in the 13th, and the 12th place, DJ Kennington, again, transmission problems for the Castro Edge Dodge. Tough points day for DJ Kennington. Let's go to victory lane. The belts are unbuckled. Kevin Lacroix is climbing out of that number 74 car to a huge ovation here at Circuit I car as he celebrates 
Back-to-back -back wins at ICAR, fourth victory at ICAR, third victory this year. You had them covered today. I know you weren't happy starting fifth, but you didn't last there very long as the family comes in to celebrate. Yeah, it was uh, it was nice. Uh, I think sorry, B5 was uh, just a little bit more fun <laughs> than leading all the laps, but uh, yeah, also it was uh, tough at the restarts, the last one, but uh, you know, that's uh, that's good racing. That's uh, that's nice to be able to battle this way and not take each other out. And just so happy, first, uh, first win for the Napa team. Uh, new colors, so uh, very happy at home, so very happy. Congratulations, Kevin Lacroix is your winner here at Circuit Icar. Super confident Kevin Lacroix when he can say it's fun to start P5 because you have a little bit more work to do. Mark Antoine Cameron basically doubled his points lead, and look at Tagliani and Lacroix sneaking into the picture. They've still got a shot, Dave. Let's head down with your points leader and second place finisher. Mark, I know you would love to win this event. However, second place is a great points day for you today. Oh, definitely. The GM Paye was, uh, was fast today, but not enough. The 74 of Kevin Lagoa was really, really good. So we have to choose our fight. Uh, today was his day. We have to focus on the championship. That's a really good point for their championship. And next race is small sports. So we're going to go race by race until the end. Well done. Thank you. Salt race for that driver as the track sits quiet right now. It definitely was not a quiet or easy race for the driver who finished third, who is now standing by with our Todd Lewis. Todd? Alex, second sensational race in a row here in Quebec. What a drive coming from 19th. Yeah, it was a tough one for sure there, starting at the back of the pack and uh, making my way up. It's tough in those situations, you know, trying to keep the car good in the long run and making making moves and passing guys, but I felt like I did a, a pretty good job uh, coming from almost last to the third there, so that was a good run for us. I'm real happy. Maybe another caution. I would have made another miracle happen to win, but we'll take third place here. Thank you. Three very appreciative drivers on the podium. The General Tire 125 on TSN has been brought to you by Delta Bingo and Gaming. By Castrol Edge, the number one synthetic brand in Canada. And by General Tire, the official tire of the NASCAR Pinty Series. The drivers played nicely today here at ICAR. Next week, CTMP. There's hard feelings already from the last round there, Dave. It's going to be exciting. The WeatherTech 200 is next from all of us at Fuel Media Lab. We'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.